Once again, let's go to the very beginning in this Man Up, O Black Israel series. Let's go to the very beginning. Now, as we've listed up here, we have one, two, three, four. We have man, we have men, we have male, and we have mankind. Now, it's very important to pay attention. I often say the price of the truth. I mean, the price of a college education is to pay the fee that the colleges prescribe and do what they tell you to do. But the price of truth really is paying attention. The truth is here, there, and it's everywhere. And if we only would pay attention, we will be able to grasp the, 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 true, the true perspective and the true reality of, of, of things, of people, places, and things. Now, looking at this man, men, male, and mankind, Society, since we live in a post-racial, they say post-racial society. No, we live in a post-traumatic, slave disordered society. That's what sort of society that we really live in. And let us put this over here under niggerism. P-T-S-D. P-T-S-D. Post-traumatic slave disorder. Now, the disorder... Is, is uh, let, let's square let's square this so PTSD squared PTSD and the D is squared the D is squared because it's twofold it's one disordered it's outside of God's true order to say it's disordered and it is dis ease so the disorder has created a dis ease and dis ease mean a uneasiness. Um, but this, this uneasiness can metastasize and manifest in, in many different ways. You understand? In many different ways, like a, like a virus or like a plague in that sense. Now, in going to the beginning of this subject matter of man up, because we've said and we continue to say we hear this all over the place. Everybody says man up. But they're usually speaking in um, terms of mere material provision. This, this, is, this is usually where, and then the paradigm when we say, okay, man up. Yes, that's legitimate. You understand? And, and not just for others, but even for ourselves. You understand? We have to man up. And this is why this, this particular series is close to I and I, heart and consciousness. And we've heard others address what, we can, what can we do about black people and helping black men and, and trying to remedy or change or better such and such. But I think this, this is it. This is it right here. This is it because once we now start to study this man, who is a man? At one time in this PTSD square society, the only man is and was considered to be the white man. In fact, they even made this law. This is law. This is, this is actually in the Constitution, that the black male is considered, um, what is it, three-fifths? It's the three-fifths clause, the three-fifths. You understand? Know Let us put this right here, three over five, and put a question mark right here. Three over five, the three-fifths clause to the Constitution, you understand, know which basically said, that those who was brought over here in the trans-Ethiopic ocean slave trade, you understand, were only considered to be three-fifths of a white man. You understand? The three-fifths of a white man. Therefore, the white man, let's move this over a little bit, therefore the white man was the standard and still is the standard. So when they say man up, they're saying live like a white man, be like a white man. It's, 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 it's very racist. Really. Not to say it, not just saying it. There's, a, there's an important point, especially for us, black people, you understand, the black males. Something has been done to us, and we can't wait around for somebody else to correct it and, and better us. we got to do it for ourselves. You understand, we have to do it for ourselves, and we have not been doing it, and we all are culpable. And as Paul said about himself, I would say if Christ, if the black Lord and Savior named Jesus Christ came for the sinners, then I am chief. I am, I am chief of those who he came for. And Christ in his kingly character came for us. You understand? He's our light, our illumination, and our salvation. You understand? Both in spirit as well as in truth. So in understanding this right here, the man, who is the man? 
who is the biggest question mark here is, is man or three-fifths? Is it the man? You know, it's like the man. The man is coming. The man doesn't want you to do that. The man and the man and the man. And in black people's story in America, the man was considered to be the white man, the European, the Anglo-American, the Gentile, the slave master, the demon-possessed racist. You call it what you may. You know, that's who was considered to be the man. And we as so-called black folks or black males, notice they always say black males, then they do something very tricky in word. It's called like word magic, the word magic. That you hear them say that we won't be under black male. Now, some of y'all think they're talking about we won't be extorted, they're not going to extort us, so forth and so on. But deeper than that, there's a reality that is deeper than that. You understand? Because when you hear black male, on one hand, they're not going to be under black male, and then you hear on the next hand, they say they're looking for a black male suspect, black male suspect, such and such description. He looked like a black male. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, that, no, that's not him. Oh, there you go. Okay, that could be him right there. Um, black male, the two of them equal the same thing. So black male, we have black male, and then we have black male. Both of them have a negative. See, this is the word magic. Both of them have a negative connotation. You understand? A neg even if somebody's not thinking about it consciously, unless they have consciously dealt with it and faced that, that issue in their, in their mind, then it has an adverse effect on them unconsciously. You know, a lot of folks would say, well, I don't think that way. Well, you might not think that way consciously, you know, but there's more that goes on conscious than the conscious level. The subconscious part is the real aspect that we need to investigate. And Francis Cress Welsing's book, um, The ISIS Papers, is logged under African American Studies and Psychology. I, I had wondered years ago, why did she put it under psychology? But then as I studied it, I was like, wow, we do need to look at the psychological level of things. And one of the subscribers, when we first started on, on our YouTube's, um, on one of the YouTube's channels that we have, when we first started on, on with some programming, um, someone said, you know, the Bible is very, made a, a comment about the Bible being very, it's like being psychological, that there's a lot in the Bible that is psychological, you know, saying that's dealing with um, um, human nature and the nature of things from a more metaphysical or psychological dimension. And that is where, when you really have become born again, when you can start to read this Bible, you understand, know and start to see those aspects and then also make the connection, the relevancy to the so called real outer world. You understand, to the real outer world. But initially, it's dealing with the real inner world. It's dealing with the inner world reflected in the types and symbols of the outer world. Now, that being said, let's, let, let's move on because we have man. So when they say man up, what image? So here we are at the beginning, Genesis chapter 1. And Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, I'm sure you all have heard this before. This was the creation of man on the sixth day, as they call it. And this is verse 26, and it says, And God said, or, and Elohim said, Baruchu, blessed be he, let us, or make us, make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, so Elohim, or God in your Bibles, created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now let's pause for the cause here. This is very important. This part is very important as we start to address the, the solution, you understand, which is reversing the curse, you understand. As we start to address this man in its proper context, if we would go to the template 
of the very beginning here in our B-I-B-L-E or in the, in the Hebrew Old Testament or the Torah portion of the Bible, it says, let us make man in our image. Now, those who have the Schofield Study Bible, whether the digital, the free digital one we have at www.lojsociety.org or on hard copy like we have here, you will notice there's a, 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 a sub a subscripted uh, number, and it's three. And here it's a footnote that says man. And it says, give the general, and they said Gen Genesis 2, verses 7, 21 to 23, is the particular account of the creation of man. And it says, the revealed facts are, one, man was created, not evolved. And this is very important, but this does not mean that there were not other kinds of men, mankind, as well as many kinds, but mankind. There's a distinction. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught we black peoples almost 40 years ago that the black man is man and the white man is mankind. And he pointed our attention that listen to them when they speak. And as you start to pay attention, you will notice a lot in the media and writing that they usually, white supremacy usually considers themselves mankind. One small step for man. You remember that? One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on for a moment. You probably thought that man and mankind was the same thing, right? That's what a lot of people probably thought. That, what's the difference? There's the key. They say the devil's in the detail. That's the key. That man and mankind cannot be the same. Because how are you going to take one small step for man? but then it's going to be a giant leap for mankind. So what is the difference between man and mankind? That's because the early scholars and academics who study this Bible, and there's a lot of this information that is once again in, in uh, easy, available, maybe not once again, for the first time some of this information is now available through the, a lot of the PDF books and, and online books and, and, and the Internet and Google, so forth and so on. A lot of these books are available, and we've seen some of them written like 100, 200, some 300 more years ago, which acknowledge the greatness of the black people of the black race. Some of them even observe how ironic it is that, that their descendants have been enslaved in the way that they have been when their ancestors on the monuments of ancient Egypt and throughout other parts of the world, even as far as China, you know, are, 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 were so great. You know what I'm saying? We're the founders of, of, of science, of literature, of art, of mathematics, of biology, of, of all other kind of ologies as well. So there's a difference between man and mankind. Please note that. As the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, and we are at agreement with the basic foundation of his teachings, that we are man. We are man as black man. We are man, and they are mankind because they are one of the kinds of man. In other words, man made men. Man made men. And from men, we get mankind. Now, male is a gender issue. It's a gender issue, either you're male or female. But in its use or abuse against the lost sheep, black folks, this male also has another connotation. You understand? And the other connotation, let's put a slash here, and let's put black male. Now you do the math and you figure it out. Black male. Black male. Now as we just ob observed, mankind points to the Gentiles or the European is mainly mankind. And he acknowledges it in many ways. He just pointed to the shuttle, the space shuttle land, not the shuttle, but it was the, um, the Apollo landing on the moon, the so-called, as they say, where one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. If you didn't get the significance of that, whether they went to that real moon or not, the fact that they would say this is a small step for man, but for mankind, man, this is a giant leap. A giant leap of what? 
a leap of their faith, which means a leap of the counterfeit, the antichrist, a, a great leap. Now, when we're reading here, we find that man was created, not evolved. This does not mean that there are not certain beings. See, evolution goes on on many different levels, first of all. We want to do a teaching on evolution because some have asked that question. We've asked it ourselves. Um, where do we stand on evolution? It's a word, and the word means to evolve or to change or to grow or go through different steps of um, um, progressive changes, basically, it's to evolve. You can evolve spiritually. You can evolve psychologically. Or physical things, living things, also have gone through certain steps of evolution. Now, Darwin and many of the races seems to have put out a certain idea that they prefer to say that a monkey was their ancestor than to admit that they evolved or devolved, actually, from the original man. So if there's evolution, there's also devolution. And we'll try to address that, y'all willing, hopefully, in, in another lecture on evolution and where we stand on evolution. But first and foremost, the true black man or the original man was created and not evolved. Were there those who evolved? Well, of course, but the man here was created. Now, this is one expressly declared, and the declaration is confirmed by our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in Matthew 19 and 4, Mark 10 and 6. Now, secondly, there's an enormous gulf, a divergence, practically infinite, as Huxley said, between the lowest man and the highest beast confirms it. So even the lowest man is different in a physical sense, but in an instinctual or psychological sense, low life mankind, you understand, is basically animalistic, but moreover is bestial, but what links the two, he is functioning off of instinct. He is not a rational or a reasonable being. Like I said, be reasonable. That means we can reason, we can think and share ideas. In other words, do mental, logical carpentry on ideas. Not everyone is at that particular psychological or soul evolution. See, where evolution kind of went wrong is the racism the racism that crept into the whole evolution kind of, kind of argument. But like we said, we'll try to keep that for a lecture on that. But C, the highest beast has no trace of God consciousness, some say. The highest amongst the beasts have no trace of God consciousness. Well, well there's logical reason for that. And God, Elohim, said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So that means that the Elohim or God made man in his image and after his likeness to have dominion over the earth as Elohim has dominion over the heavens. You understand? And man would have dominion over the earth. Then D, it says science and discovery have done nothing to bridge that gulf. In other words, there is a gulf, there's a chasm, there's a gap. Many still, of course, the media and the social society tries to put forward the idea that, yes, like with Avatar and all these other kind of movies, so that people now are fantasizing that one time I was actually a cockroach and then I became, a, you know, so forth and so on. No, even the ancient Egyptians, and this is what's, what's very curious, even the ancient Egyptians were rational and scientific enough not to believe or put forth, though they use kind of animal images and animal heads on human bodies, this was how they explained their, their logic or their psychology. This is how they explained that there were some people who had these animal natures because they understood the natures and the instincts of the animals and now transferring that likeness as a parable now to symbology, this is why they put the animal heads in the beginning. You know, later on when mankind came on the scene, you know, when they became psychologically a little more evolved 
or the non-indigenous African Africans and then even some of the Asiatics came into that paradigm, they misunderstood. Just like many white people coming into Christianity, the Romans, they mistook and they changed and twisted you understand, things to suit their own paradigm instead of submitting themselves to the message. And this is why we have a white Jesus. That's the reason for white Jesus, the, or the whitewashed, blue, blonde hair, blue eye um, Jesus, is because in spite of what God has allegedly done for him, he can't see his God as a black man because the racism, the demonic possession is stronger than his pseudo-faith. And then you can see the fruit of that is the world that we live in today, this, this world order, the corruption, the violence, the degradation, the, 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 every evil imagination. Let's just sum it up like that. Now, the second part of this is that man was made in the image and likeness of Elohim. See, this is how we man up. We have to, first of all, know what the truth is and have to recognize who the original man is. You see, and, and this does not excuse our low and degenerate condition today. It doesn't excuse it, you understand? But it makes us acknowledge and take responsibility, the ability now that we know, now how are we going to respond to it? That's what responsibility, the ability to respond, you understand, to this. This image is found chiefly in man's triunity in man's triunity, that man is a tripartite being, and in his moral nature, man is, quote, spirit and soul and body, as First Thessalonians 5 and 23 says. So many folks who talk about the Trinity think the Trinity is a New Testament or is a, a, a Gentile or Roman or heathenistic concept. No, it's not. The triunity is right here in our Hebrew Bibles or in the, there's a Jewish trinity. And we don't have the book, but we recommend it. We've read and studied this book. It's by Yoel Natan, and it's called the, the, the Jewish Trinity. We would recommend ones who are interested into the trinity in the Old Testament, that there is, a, there is the true interpretation of the trinity, should we say, and that is Hebraic. You understand, going back, of course, to the ancient wisdom from, from Egypt and from inner Africa, from Tobia or Ethiopia. However, there is other nations also sought to interpret this. It's like there's different nations have different cultures and customs. You understand, the Hebrew trinity reflects the true paradigm and the true context of the trinity, the tripartite nature of man. Now, in other religions and cults and stuff like that, there's some reflection of that truth. But since so many people were not able to use the logical functions of their mind, they gave them images. And so people in that ignorance began to make up things. When they saw different images, they made up what this means. Instead of they never got an opportunity to read. And that's through the illiteracy of humanity. So once again, education is the key. So the spirit, what, what, what part is the spirit? Let's just understand this to understand, well, what is man? Man, first of all, man is the image and the likeness of Elohim, of the true God. That's what man is. So when we say man up, that means to us as the black Israel, as so-called black Jews and Hebrews, as the beta Israel, to man up means that we have to return to God. We have to repent to God. We have to, first of all, recognize who we are, how we got in this, you understand, and to do the will of God in Christ, our black Lord and Savior, to reverse this curse. But that means that the image and the likeness is not some blonde hair, blue-eyed white guy, you understand, or, or Gentile. We, we have to destroy the idols. The idols must be destroyed, especially in our mind. You see, it's easy just to break up a physical thing, but still the idol may still remain in our mind. You understand? The real work we have to do, as Paul says in Romans chapter 12, is not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing 
of your mind. So we have to work out our salvation, and one of the things we have to do is we have to think, meditate, and, and, and uproot, you understand, from our consciousness that which offends once we know the true from the false, the right from the wrong. But education is so very important. So this will make more, more application to the whole idea of manning up. But just telling some nigger youth, well, man up, the first thing a lot of the nigger youth going to think, he's going to look around at whatever he considers a man. You cannot choose your own, I mean, if you choose your own image of manhood and it's not based on the truth, then all you've made for yourself is an idol. You've made an idol. And today people are living in the image of the beast and in the image of the Anglo-European and the Gentiles. And that image has not worked for the Gentiles, for white supremacy. It's not working for them. You understand? We're living in a time when white supremacy or the Gentile status quo is threatening to destroy life on the face of the planet Earth to see how serious the time is that we are living in. So spirit, let's deal with the spirit. Spirit, the first part, is the part of man which knows. Spirit is the part of man which knows, 1 Corinthian, 1 Corinthian um, uh, 2, verse 11, and which allies or becomes an allies himself, him to spiritual creation and gives him God consciousness. This is how we gain God consciousness through gnosis, through gnosis, through knowing. The soul now, the second part of the tripartite man, or the trinity, which is the image and the, the likeness that we was created in, soul, or spirit, soul, and body. Now, the soul of man, or the soul in itself, it implies self-consciousness, or self-conscious life, as distinguished from plants which have unconscious life. So when we look at a plant, a plant has life. Yes, it's living. It's alive. It grows. It goes through changes. But it's an unconscious life compared to us who is the observer who has a self-consciousness. So there's that distinction. In that sense, animals also have soul. So animals are possessed of soul. This is a big debate among white folks. This is usually a white, Eurocentric, Anglo-American debate even to this day. And niggas who don't know themselves are debating one white man's opinion over another white man's opinion concerning whether animals have soul. Now, people say, well, animals do have soul. If the Pope of Rome says, the animals have soul. I like doggies. And everybody says, well, now we know. Now the Pope has soul because that's their paradigm. You understand, we're living in, that, in, in this context. So it says don't worship the image of the beast. You understand, because you, it's impossible if you do that for you to have true God consciousness and true life in this world or the next because you're living in a false paradigm which if you follow it to the hilt, you still have gone nowhere and, 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 and you have no reward, you understand, and you have no life. In that sense, animal... Animals also have soul, Genesis 1.24. But the soul of man has a vaster content, or yezota, than the soul as it's applied to beast or animal life. It is the seat of emotions. The soul is the seat of emotions. It's the seat of desires, affections, feelings, thoughts, emotions. Psalm XLII or 42 verses 1 to 6. Now, when we're reading in the myths of Kedus or, or the Bibles, or reading in the Bible, we come across sometimes it says heart. You know, you read somewhere heart in the Bible, like to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart. Now, heart in scripture language and scripture usage, heart is nearly synonymous. That means it's the sin numen. It's the synonymous or sin from Greek, the, the synonymous, which means same name. It has the same name. It's referring to the same uh, person, place, or thing, or noun with the soul. So when we use the word heart, heart means soul, and soul means heart from a Hebraic mindset. This is where we have to be um, transformed by renewing our mind. You see, because in, in, in Gentile 
um, Christianity for the most part. They don't teach this. They don't. They really. You have to go to some big college or university or something like that. And even there, you might not get all of it, because the natural man is the natural man is characteristically the soul neural or psychical man. The natural man, as opposed to the spiritual man, is a soul a soluno or the soluo a soluo or a soul man. I'm a soul man. That's the natural man. That's a natural man is a soul man, or a psychical. This means he's psychical. He's a psychical man. Soul is often used as synonymous, the same name, with the individual. The soul is used as synonymous. It's like in Egypt, they would say the ka, the ka. So it's almost like a double of the individual, or it's a part of the individual that reflects the individual. Genesis uh, 12 and 5. Now, the last part of this divine trinity in man, this is why we're in our Ethiopic creed where it says, um, um, what am I, who am I? The answer to it is like the trinity has made me. The trinity has made me. In other words, I was made or created in the image of God, and that means that with a tripartite or a trifold being or a triunity with spirit, with soul, and with a body or an organic or a carbon base, this, this body that we have melanated as melanated beings is a carbon based. Even others, their bodies too, a little different arrangement, but still it is a carbon based organic structure. This is, our, this is our body or our vehicle. Now, the body is separate from spirit and soul, and the, it's the body that is susceptible the body is susceptible to death. It is nevertheless, all the same, it is an integral part of man. But I want you to pay attention, my brothers and sisters, to the order. How spirit is first, soul is next, and body is last. Then I want you to think about what the world says. It says mind and body. Others say body and soul. What do you put the body? They say if you get your body image good, or nice, or the way you want to fantasize what image you want to live in, and, and if you can live in that, you start to feel better in your soul. That is sorcery, and that is witchcraft, because in, inevitably the person later on doesn't feel good. And, and, and I look at the Michael Jackson thing to be an extreme example. That's an extreme example of, of, of that. But um, that's another point. But the body separate from spirit and soul and susceptible to death is ne nevertheless an integral part of man. As the resurrection shows, the resurrection, the tensai, it shows this. John 5, 28 and 29, 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 15, verses 47 to 50, and Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 13. Now the soul uh, or, 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 or the body, should we say, now is the seat or the chakra of the senses. In other words, the senses is the means by which the spirit and soul have world consciousness. So it's through the body and the senses in the body that we gain a world consciousness. This is where they say the five senses, though the um, Kuvur Neges teaches that man has ten senses. But the, the five senses are really reflected. This is where we get the ka and the ba in the Egyptian mysteries um, from the fact that, that when they tell you the five senses, they're only telling you on one hand. They're only telling you on one hand. And the five senses are the physical um, 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 feeling, um, um, touch, touch, taste, seeing, um, hearing, uh, which one, which one did I miss? The ability to taste, the ability to touch, the ability to smell, the ability to see, the ability to hear. These are our five worldly or earthly senses. But then that's only one hand. On the other hand, we have our five reflective spiritual senses, you see. But in the Western, white Western Gentile uh, system that we live under or within, they only address one hand, and that's the physical side of it or the body side of it. And there's a very interesting uh, 
connection to, to, to the melanin on one hand and the ability to see or perceive certain spiritual levels, you understand, know certain spiritual levels. There's a very, very interesting and scientific connection to that that Dr. Francis Cress Welsing speaks about. But be that as it may, we wanted to make this point here because it's not in the notes right here in Schofield. But what Schofield has at least gives us a good start. It says that the body is the seat of the senses, the means by which the spirit and the soul. The spirit and the soul aspect now, it has world consciousness. It, it can be conscious of this world around us through our seeing, through our hearing, through our smelling, through our tasting, and through our touch. The, the spirit and the soul now can can have a world consciousness or uh, a physical, we can say, a physical consciousness. And the body is also of the fallen Adamic nature, of the fallen nature. The bodies that we have are of the fall. This is why I'm going to talk about disease. And disease is not something that just pops up. It's, it's embedded in the genetic code. And now they're learning that some diseases have been passed down from several generations, and sometimes they lay dormant in the body, and they don't know what triggers cause these, these dormant diseases in our DNA to be activated. But whatever, some say it could be stress, some say it could be trauma, anxiety, the, the hatred, it, they don't really know exactly, but, but they're in the right direction and they pursue it along those grounds. All of that is part of the fallen Adamic nature, according to Romans chapter 7, verses 23 to 24. So as you can see, and hopefully here, that when we start to get into this issue of man up, the first thing we have to define is man. And the first thing we have to also make clear and, and become conscious of is that our people, the lost sheep, the ones lost but now found beta Israel, was given a false, was stripped of their own manhood during the days of Willie Lynchism and how to make a slave. A certain program has been installed within the general atmosphere of society and throughout the whole structure. It's a systemic problem. It's a systemic, all those cosmetic changes that took place in the 60s and the 70s, affirmative action, the 80s, the 90s, none of that has changed anything. It has not even changed certain values. You know, we find that people, by and large, still have a lot of the, the same um, demons. The demons have not been cast out, in other words. And we're seeing these demons coming back now as we're in touch tough economic times and so forth and so on, where we're seeing these things burst out by the, by the seams. So we have to get a, a, a new paradigm, you understand, a new standard of, of manhood. Because if, you, if we just go on as we're going on, we must understand that the three-fifths is still in effect. The three-fifths said that a black man or the slaves – is only three-fifths of a white man, and thus the false thought is that the man, the man was the white man. And there's a lot of movies and a lot of other, other art that, that, that will show you period time pieces, um, documentaries, where you'll see this was a thought. When a black man was talking about the man, he wasn't talking about, he would almost never use that for another black man. He won't think of it. And so therefore you get this kind of, um, this conflict among this fracticide, this black on black crime. And all of that has its root in this same mystery, but this lost part of our, for lack of a better word, our story or our mythology or our history that the Bible is the best evidence and the best text to begin and to go into to decipher this. So man, man is, we can't man up unless we understand what man is. We can't man up unless we destroy the false idol that the blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus and white supremacy and racism has caused. So, so this requires 
a, a certain amount of conscious effort. One must be conscious of this. A lot of folks don't want to be conscious of it. They say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yet when they're talking about other people and other situations, they go back generations to some old generational thing that another group or people is still struggling with, and this is the reason why they do things today. And then when we as black people say, well, we got to talk about let's make a slave and, and, and really lynchism and see what happens to us here, they say no because a lot of people are sensitive about it. It must be the oppressor, the downpressor, who's the one who's sensitive about it. You understand? That's a part of our present and our future, not just for us, but for our children and our children's children. They hope that we don't address it. Because if we address it, we're going to begin to see this, this program that has been running. It's like a virus software that has been running on our spiritual and our psychical hard drive, and this has caused a lot of the dis-ease and the disorder in our body politic, even as black men and black women. We're arguing about a lot of nonsense issues that really have their roots and origin in the whole woolly lynchism, let's make a slave. But as soon as somebody talks about it, people say, oh, it's always blaming you, know, like black man. But then we have to understand those kind of black women. We really have to understand those kind of black women. And, and you sisters out there have to give us brothers some help on this because a lot of us don't want to have to, you know, go into, we want to we wanna work on ourselves, you understand, and build up ourselves in the image and as, after the likeness of God's true example, our black Lord and Savior. You sisters have to start to address some of your fellow sisters, you understand, because, see, there's a, there's a whole problem among black women, too, because a lot of black women, they don't have true sisterhood, you understand. In the world, if they're out there in the world, they have sisters out there, but then when they come out in the kingdom, it's like Lonelyville. But you have to understand the context of how to make a slave was not only against the black male, but there's a whole section here where they call it the breaking process, the breaking process of the African woman. And the breaking process of the African woman is, 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 is very, it's very, not just interesting, but it's, it's timely that we address this. But this we leave to the sisters, you know, daughters, the mothers and the wives, you understand, to address, uh, you know, because you all have to speak to the sisters. We're trying to man up and speak to our fellow, our, our black men and our brothers, especially our Beta Israel and Hebrew, you understand, and Ethiopian Hebrew brothers over here, um, in the diaspora, but we need the sisters to also address some of the sister issues, not some of them, all of them, because we, we need to address all of the, the, the brother, the men, the male, the black men issues. Um, that's just a, a word right there we want to want to put out there, um, because besides Francis Cress Welsing and um, Shaharazad, uh, Shaharazad Ali, I mean, sisters that, that, that pulled no punches on declaring truth is truth, whether it's the truth about the white man, the white woman, or the black man, and especially the black woman. These are our sisters who, in a sense, they're like, according to the, par uh, the, the, the parable or, or the, myth, the mythos, if, if the black man is like that Osar, Osiris, the mythological deadbeat father or, or that, 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 that black lord, per lord of the perfect black, then the two women that you see in the glyphs standing behind the throne, who is so often referred to as Orset and uh, Neptis, you know what I'm saying, or Nebhet, Nebhet, you know what I'm saying, are, the, are, are like Francis Cress Welsing and Shaharazad Ali in this present time. And then when we look in yesterday, we find um, Sojourner Truth and um, Harriet, even the name, Harriet and, 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 and Hathor, Horus, and there's a connection right there, and there's a real connection linguistically, etymolog uh, etymologically, that leads us to the, the Ethiopic Genesis and the Ethiopic Exodus, and we can understand how, how it all came out 
of Egypt, but really out of inner Africa, and the root is Ethiopia. So we're, we're asking that our sisters, daughters, mothers, wives, um, step up as well to help us get out because it, it will come across differently if a sister deals with the sisters or deals with the sisterhood on certain of these issues. But that also means that the sister or sisters who deal with these issues also have to be mature. You know what I'm So there's a, there's a learning curve, you know what I'm saying, because it took us some years of really being able to digest you know, the various threads of the information and to be able to hopefully present it in a, in, in a context for clarity where others can get it or get enough that can help them now find the truth and learn the truth and gain that truth for self. You understand? So that is that, is that being said. You understand? With that being said, we're going to move forward to, a, to another related, related, related level. But what we wanted to do is just summarize a little bit right here. So man up, you understand? Because a black man is down right now. Are you down? You understand? The black man is down right now. But we got down here firstly because of our own error. This is the first thing the black man, the black man needs to, first of all, when he acknowledges who he is and who his people are and how we got in this situation. The, the first response, because we cannot say we're, we're the head. You know, the man said the man is the head and so forth and so on. Now a lot of men have been so effeminized, they can't even say that rightly. You know what I'm saying? They say it sheepishly because it's a part of that programming of Wooly Lynch, the Wooly Lynch um, software and the hardware that has done damage to, to our, they even say it here in How to Make a Slave, like destroy, to destroy our our natural God-given context and to reverse the relationships and to reverse the roles. And this is what's happened and has led to a lot of other byproducts, even the rise in, in, in you know, the lesbian and, and black woman. A lot of crazy stuff is going on, basically. You know what I mean? But most of, that, most of the stuff that's going on is not sustainable. You understand? It's really not sustainable. It's only sustainable in the paradigm of white supremacy. And this is what's interesting about it. it's only sustainable in the context of white supremacy. Like, like um, um, Mickey Mouse is only real when you go to Disneyland, in, in that sense. You really don't see Mickey Mouse and the, the rat in your house or the mice in your house is not Mickey Mouse. You know, you, you don't make no, no, no confusion about it. You understand? But most have been in Disneyland or in Babylon so long. And for us, it's a generational thing that it, it, it takes... It takes some faith in the King of Kings and his Christ to, to, to really get past that, you understand, to get past that, to even be, begin to um, recognize. And accepting this truth is not easy. It's, it's not anything easy. People like, just man up. What they're doing, saying is just be a part of the materialistic culture of the society. Uh, in other words, um, um, if, you're, if you do this the mere material things, we'll give you a blight and we'll treat you like you're a good guy, whether it's by hook or by crook. But even the hook or the crook thing, because some black folks, like we said earlier, they've tried the other way, made this paper like it was nothing, like it was water, so forth and so on. But then they use the other part of their paradigm, the prison industrial complex. You understand? Because when the nigga even makes that money, by hook or by crook, he's coming back to project a certain image. He's not using that money outside of the system of things. But he doesn't even recognize that he is in a system of things and a, a certain installation of, a, of the software has been put even into our hearts and minds. So we have to extricate that. We have to get that out of us. You understand? And that's a process, and there's a certain procedure to it. So here in Genesis, here in Genesis chapter 1, we see the true context of man. As we go further, we're going to touch on how man made men. Man made men, and men made mankind. Kinds of man, kinds of men. So man was made in the image and after the likeness of God, but then as different Different breedings started to go in different directions, 
And as order, the divine order broke down, even in the past, we had men. You understand? A lot of different men. You know, when God in the beginning was one, and he made man in his image and after his likeness. But as men started to worship other gods, the fallen angels and demons, they became men. They became men. And we in Rastafari, among some of I and I brothers in the brotherhood, we say, um, um, you know, sometimes one's willing to say amen, you know, as a pun on the words. In the kindergarten level of it, amen, we say aman. And then we learned that actually in the Ethiopic, aman was actually a greeting. And when we say Emmanuel, you know, Emmanuel, it's actually uh, Emmanuel, Aman. And so, so it's interesting when we get past, past the prisons of, of white supremacy way of thinking. Now, the male, we touched on the male, too. You understand how they prefer to call a black a male. And even in his fallen state, to strip him even more. But the thing you need to connect with male, especially black male, is what kind of black male are they talking about? And really, when you come to the crux of it, you understand the crossroads of it, it's one and the same thing. They're speaking about when the white man says we will not be on the black male, he means that in, in more than one way. And he means that we're not going to be under. That's why having an African-American president whose mama was, was a white woman, it, it's still difficult for a lot of white supremacy to kind of grasp and deal with. But why? Because his father, because his father was what? Black. See, it would have been very different if Obama's father was the white guy and his mother was, 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 was black. It would be a little bit different. But then you also have to watch out for the she-snake, too. White women are not easy in that respect. Look at feminism. Look how white women's feminism destroyed or helped to destroy the black power movement by deceiving black females. You know, it's, it's, it's the, buggest, the, the buggest thing right there. But that being that. And then mankind. And mankind, and we reflected on it, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching that the black man is man. He's the man that was created in the beginning. And the white man is a kind of man. And some of the references to that is when you notice in, in uh, Genesis on the sixth day, the same sixth day, in Genesis 1 and 24, and Elohim said, and God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind. After what his kind? cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. So everything had its kind. So even man, the original man, to say the black man or the ancient Ethiopian or Tobian, also had their kinds, had their kinds. And here's where we get mankind as distinct, distinct from man. And don't, don't take my word or believe what I'm saying. Take my word and research it, but look it up for yourself. You'll remember the space shuttle. Not, I keep saying space shuttle. What's that? The Apollo landing thing where he says one small step. Uh, this, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> they were talking about themselves because they're always about themselves. It's about high time that we be about our father's business. And brothers... My, my brothers, it's time for I and I to man up. But we, we, we have to recognize in whose image, you understand, in whose image do we see the Savior, you understand? And if you man up to a white supremacist image, you're, just a, you're still a slave, you understand? You might be paying your bills, got some money in your pocket, may have a car or two, some nice suits, some bling bling, so forth and so on, but, but, um, but you're still, spiritually speaking, are, are deader than a doornail. You know, was, anyway, um, more to come. Stay tuned. Shalom. Rastafari. <laughs>